there's this recognition of the capacity of youth to become protagonists of change in their, in their communities and to mobilize the resources and to mobilize people and how the aspirations of youth are shaped by, but also shape the environments that they find themselves in. The numbers, they, they really speak for themselves though. Like um, in Europe, like 11.9% uh, of the farmers is under 40. And in Africa, these numbers are even worse. So what is uh, the kind of programs uh, initiating younger people on this? Giving them insurances set up, set up, or the minimum uh, uh, resources to invest in agriculture, but as well as organizing them in cooperatives. For many, youth aspirations to leave are rooted in this perception that there is no future in the village that they reside in. And the research tries to look at how varying forms of education specifically shape the perception that there's no future in the village. It's an education that has to, it seems, instill in young people a sense of purpose to transform uh, existing systems and to maybe allow them to engage meaningfully in conversations among themselves, among with other farmers in other continents, with our older farmers. There is also a, a, a kind of a, a stigma to agriculture, as in it's bad for the environment. And that, that's of course, that is true to a, to, a, to a large extent, like agriculture is one of the causes which, which contributes to climate change. However, it's really important to also see that these young people are really the people who already acknowledge that there is at least climate change and we want to solve that. When would young people choose agriculture, choose to be farmers, to have that be an active choice, something they desire? You know, there are instances where young people actively choose it. And so what can we learn from those situations? I think the choice to be a farmer is linked to um, a bigger social purpose and a bigger vision for change. And so those two things seem to be linked in an important way.